Hey guys, today we are going to make these cute little planters, these Christmas planters. Um, I like to make them in a set of three. This is cranberry, kale, and starlight. I use Woolies Thick and Quick. It's a size six, super bulky yarn. This is one of my favorite colors. It's starlight and it has little pieces of gold like tinsel in it. Anyway, if you guys have followed me very long, you know this is my favorite yarn and I use it all the time. It's super bulky, so whatever you make with it works up really quickly. And for baskets and things and little planters, um, it's really nice and sturdy. So I showed you the little Christmas trees. They also have these little poinsettias with the same base. This is what the base looks like without a cover on it. And then you can also get non-seasonal little succulents and plants like this. And let's see. I use an eight millimeter L hook and I will talk about the little tags later. So let's get started on making the little tree. So you just need a tail long enough to weave in your ends, so not very long. And the pattern starts from the bottom up and we start with a magic ring or a magic circle. So take your end, wrap it around twice, insert your hook under both loops, pull up a loop, chain one. There's your magic circle. So the pattern calls for a chain two, and the chain two does not count as a stitch. So we're doing double crochets in the circle, so I like to chain two. If I'm doing a single crochet or half double crochet, I just chain one. So the pattern calls for 14 double crochet in the circle. One. Two. three, four. So I'm gonna continue around and meet you at the end when we join the circle. Okay, so I finished the 14 double crochet in the circle and it's time to close the ring up. So with the magic circle, there's these two little rings and you gotta kind of pull. One of the loops will pull up and tighten things and then you just take your tail in and pull and keep pulling to close it tight like that. I find with this thicker yarn, you really don't need to pull the loop. You can pull the end <clears throat> and it closes, but certain yarns break easily, so I don't suggest it. So anyway, we want to join the circle um, in the beginning double crochet. The beginning chains don't count. So we're about to start the sides and we're gonna be working in the back loop only. So when working in the back loop only or starting the sides of a basket like this, I suggest using the no cut join method because it creates um, a better looking seam right here. So this no cut join method works really well when you're working in the back loops only, the third loop of a half double crochet, it makes it a lot less noticeable. So normally, You'd have your hook here, join with the slip stitch. You want to remove your hook from the loop, make the loop just a little bigger than normal. Then you insert your hook from the back to the front under both loops of that joining stitch, which is our first double crochet of that previous round. Okay, then you put the loop on the hook and pull it through like that, and there you have it. Once we go around in a circle, you'll notice how it's not very noticeable at all. So the next round is starting the sides, and it's a single crochet in the back loop only. So you chain one, single crochet. One, two, three, four, 
five. I'm gonna finish that round and then come back and show you how to join. Okay, so that first side round is finished and we're gonna join to the first single crochet, skip over that chain and we just join with the slip stitch. I always like to pull that kind of tight to make a less noticeable seam. So you just join with a slip stitch, then chain one, and this next round, actually the next four rounds are just single crochet around. And you join each round with a slip, slip stitch, and then you do the chain one. So you just keep going. And I'm gonna finish the next four rounds and meet you here for um, the finishing detail round. Okay, so I finished the four rounds and it's coming together. I forgot to show you how nice that no cut join method looks. See how you can't really tell where the bottom starts. If you join with just a slip stitch, there's like a weird little ridge there that's quite noticeable. So this one looks really nice. Okay, so the finishing round is a reverse single crochet. And it's a little tricky to get started because you're gonna be working backwards, but once you do it a few times, you kind of get the hang of it and it comes together. So I join my fourth round. I'm gonna chain one, then you're gonna be working in to the last stitch of the um, round that you just completed under both loops. So it's basically a single crochet, but you're working in the opposite direction that you'd normally work. Okay, so then the next one, you insert your hook, draw up a loop, pull through both loops. Okay. So you just keep going around, insert your hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. Oops, I missed that one. You have to work a little bit loosely. Like the loop on your hook, you kind of pull a little bit looser than you normally would. You just keep going in all the stitches. Okay, so under both loops, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. Just gonna go ahead and complete this round with you because I wanna show you how I finished the end. So that would have been 14 stitches. Actually, this is 14 stitches, okay which we have 14 in the round. But see how I have this extra space where the slip stitch was? If I finish now, I feel like there's too big of a gap. So I always do an extra crab stitch or reverse single crochet right there. And I just kind of fit it under there the best I can, drop a loop. Okay, now let me try that again. Okay, now I'm just going to cut off my end, pull that like that, and let me show you how I weave the end in to make it look almost seamless. So there's like two little loops right there I go under there from the front of my piece. And you'll see when I finish that, you gently pull it, kind of mess with it a little and see ends up being pretty much seamless. So let's weave in the end. So on these little planters, I like to go down the side 
and then I weave around the bottom because these stitches are tight and the end really stays in place. So normally I'd weave back and forth a couple times, but you really don't need it on this because that bottom is really tight and it stays in place. So then just give a tug and make sure that end is still nice and tight. And then just kind of work around. You can go up the side a little bit. Come back down. I kind of go through the yarn sometimes to make the end really stay put. Okay. Then you turn it inside out. Give it a little stretch back in place. And then I have my little tags. I'll put all the links to the tags. I found these Christmas tags this year, which are really cute. I'll put the link to where I got those. But normally I use my logo tags, which is simply made by Erin.com. But I really like the Christmas tags. Use these little, I think they're called Chicago screws. They have a screw on the other end. So you just put it in the hole, kind of find a good opening. And then you screw it on. You can use your hand, but I am shaky. So I have this little tiny screwdriver, which makes it way easier. There you go. And then let's take one of our trees and you just kind of stretch it on, fit it over. So I kind of put it on a flat surface and rub it a little to make it nice and flat. These are not, these are very lightweight, so they're not super sturdy. So you kind of want to flatten the base really well so that they sit, make sure it's on nice and even. And then with these little planters, they're black inside and not very pretty. So I take a little Spanish moss. You can get this at any craft store, Amazon, Walmart. It's very messy. So my trick is I have a little bin. It's kind of like a trash can. And I hold all my plants over it when I do this. So I do it really carefully like this, kind of Fold it over so that the little pieces don't get all into my yarn. After you do it a few times, you'll get the hang of it. How to do it without making a huge mess. See, it's very messy. But anyway, that is it. You have your cute little tree. And I find they sell really well in a set of three with these three colors but you can sell them separately too. And I will put the link to my blog post down below, all the links to everything that you see here. Um, so you can get some for yourself, the woolies that can quick, and the pattern's gonna be free on my blog for the mini size. This pattern, the pirouette pattern, also comes in two other sizes, a medium and large, and there's some bonus sizes in there from planters I've found in the past, but I think most of them are discontinued. But I'm keeping them in the pattern just so you have those extra sizes. And if you have any questions or comments, put it below. Um, the ad-free paid versions can always be found on Etsy and Ravelry and Lovecraft. So have a good day, you guys. Talk to you soon.